It's me, Ari Dasset, or as you already know me, Rashid. This is another audio life of mine, so I won't be showing anything on a whiteboard in this li live stream. And again, I'll start at 4 minutes, so please, take your time to come in. At least come in before the 4th minute. And let me know in the live chat when you're here, please. Thank you very much. Again, this is an audio live, so I won't be showing any visuals. Let me know in the live chat, please. Thank you very much. Dementias, glad to have you here. Whoever gave the thumbs up, thank you very much. Another thumbs up, thank you very much. Maria, thanks to have you. I'm glad you're here. Within two minutes, I'll begin with the class. Tammy, thanks to be. Thanks, to, I'm glad to you're here. I'll start at four minutes. MC, glad to have you here. Last, glad you're here. Shalom. It's a Shabbat indeed. So, take your Shabbat rest when you. Class has begun. All right. One question to you. I don't give an example to you, an example. And in example, there's a question. You are into football. I believe United States is called soccer, but anyway, I'm going to use the word football for now. You're into football. And you know that there is this final somewhere between two American football teams. And you are excited, you purchase your ticket. You travel all the way to Miami to see that football match live in a stadium. And you had to be fast because uh, you only have 50,000 seats. And if you're not on time, you, you don't have a seat. And you thought, hey, I want to have a good seat for me and my family. So you went online and purchased tickets. 
and to purchase your plane tickets also, and to arrange the hotel. So it was a whole investment you made just to see that match. Then you arrive there. Now, you already have your preference which team you're for, but you know that the chance exists that your team won't win. But anyway, you don't even care which party wins, you're just there for the experience. To see those two great teams playing and made the best win. You believe in the sport ethics that the best may win and the losers need to take the honorable loss. At least that's how you were raised. Now, you go there with your family, you see the match. Well, in this case, the team you were for did not win, but you don't mind because you were there. You had a great time. But then your your eight-year-old son tells you that um, this seemed a bit weird and you you ask, you ask your son what do you mean it looks weird and your son tells you that it seems like they faked the game and she'll laugh it off because she think what does an eight-year-old kid know about uh, professional sports but later you let's say a year later you you watch the game back on YouTube and then it seems like hold on a minute it seems like you've seen that game before and then you realize that hold on a minute the decisions that the teams were making didn't add up and you got the feeling also it seems like it was rigged and long story short you figure out that there was big money given to both teams to allow a certain team to win there was big money behind it now how will that make you feel that you went to see a match and let you find out it was all rigged it was all fake how will that make you feel let me know in the live chat i don't have the Time to make subti subtitles too. YouTube generates automatic subtitles with some things in English. You can put it on. Okay. Less uh, less and Dementia gave an answer. What about the rest? How would that make you feel? That you spent thousands of dollars in plane tickets, in purchasing the tickets for the match, in hotel. For you and your family going and watch the match, then you figure out it was all a hoax. Indeed. You feel like you're deceived, you've been lied to, you wasted your time. Absolutely. Now, the tricky part is if you would have looked at the bigger picture, you would have realized, well, don't I mean it? All those professional football players they get paid millions they get paid lots of money just to run after a ball and you think yourself don't a minute i can go to a, a walmart purchase a football and run after a ball kicking it into a goal also so you can if you would look at it well you think hold on a minute a football may cost maybe one dollar why are those grown men paid millions just to run after a ball? And if there are millions involved in running after a ball, can it not be that part of the agreement to get paid those millions is that they have to play a certain way? So the fact that there's so much money involved should already alert you that there may be some foul play. Because when it comes to money, people become obsessive. Now, the reason I ask that question is because I want you to understand that just like a rigged football game, that's how society is.
society is an old, dirty, rigged game. All because it's an ancient game that's been going on since the Greek Empire. It's an old, dirty, dirty because it's unfair. It's dirty because you're given the perspective, you're given the perception that you have a chance of winning, but the chance for you to win is zero. And it's a game. <laughs> now, just like in the rigged football match, you thought those are two teams of professional players who worked hard and the best team won. That's what you think. What you don't know is that both teams are on the same team. They're both there to get paid. So for them, it doesn't even matter who wins because at the end of the day, they're both paid. They will fake animosity. They will fake a fight just to make it entertaining for you. Now, I'm not going into the setting of the football field that it's, it has to deal, deal, deal with Freemasonry and uh, the, the, with the references to Apollo. I'm not going into that right now. I may do it in another uh, video. It's good to look into that too. And of course, the word ball refers to the ball Amon, a fallen angel also. But anyway, think about society as a rigged football match. That's how you need to look at society. But here's the, here's the catch. A rigged football match, you, you, you don't know it's rigged. You're being lied to it's rigged. But here's the thing. If you, are, if you belong to one of the teams, you know it's rigged because you're part of, of the scam. So you can choose not to be part of it. If you're, if you're the public that supports one of those teams, you're not aware it's rigged, so you are voluntarily supporting. But here's the thing. You have an option whether or not you support a football team. You do. But when it comes to society, you're not given an option whether or not you participate. Why? Because society is arranged in such a way that if you don't participate, you don't have a roof above your head, you don't have the finances to, to pay for your, for your expense, daily expenses, and you become homeless and you likely die quickly. So society is arranged in such a way that you're not allowed an option to not participate. You have to participate because it deals with your life, livelihood. So, society is a game in which you don't realize it's a game. But here's the catch. In this game, if you lose, you actually lose years of your life by wasting effort on things that didn't matter but you thought it mattered because you were deceived, or you end up lo lo losing your life directly because you are being blamed for what goes wrong in the community and people take it out on you, or you lose because you didn't play according to the rules called the laws of the land and you end up being and going to, to prison, or you get a fine, or you are blacklisted. So the rule makers of the game are the ones winning all the time. The rule followers never win because the game is designed to benefit the rule makers not the rule followers in society you're either a rule maker or a rule follower most people out there are just rule followers because they don't belong to the secret societies and the occult clubs that are the rule makers and on in the long term nobody wins a society because the rule makers have to deceive and trick the masses into participating. And they are living under the threat that if any time someone figures out the dirty game, they may have people coming after them. So the rule makers, they, have, they are living in danger. So they don't actually gain anything in the long run. The rule followers don't gain at all. They only get crumbs. And that is the part of society that many miss 
out on. Nobody actually wins. Everyone loses, but some people lose more than others. The rule makers lose less because they are exploiting the masses. The rule followers, when it's the masses, they don't even win. All right, let me ask you another question. What is the difference between a bailout box? A bailout box is when you're, there's a voting going on, but a national with a national election or a local election, and you need to hand in your bailout of whom you're voting for. And then once it's all in the bailout box, they come, they get, they count the votes, and they announce who's the winner. So that's a bailout box. What's the difference between a bailout box and a magical sphere? What's the difference between a bailout box and a magical sphere? A magical sphere is that crystal ball, or let me just call it a crystal ball, is a crystal ball you have at fortune tellers. What's the difference between that crystal ball at a fortune teller and the bailout box during elections? What's the difference? I'll give you one minute to answer. What's the difference between a bailout box and a crystal ball? All right, let's see if I get any got any question any answers. I'll wait for another minute more. Someone said no difference, what does the rest say? I'll wait for 30 seconds more before I continue. Mm -hmm. Okay, someone said bailout is rigged. Okay. Um, one says one is physical, the other is spiritual. And, okay, let me just explain it to you now. The crystal ball and the bailout box are exactly the same thing, but act out a different way. Let me explain. When you have an election and you fill in your bailout box, your bailout, so to write down which candidate you vote for, what you are saying is that you are investing in a specific outcome. Namely, the outcome that this candidate becomes the winner of the election. You invest in the outcome that this individual will be the solution for the challenges in the community. So you put your hopes and your trust on that individual being the answer for the community is longing for. All right, so actually you are expecting that by you signing that bill out that you have, an, have a positive impact for the future. This candidate promised certain things if he could get, he gets into office and you agree with what he said and now you want to perpetrate the outcome that he to told you by voting him into office. So, that's how you cast your vote. It's the same as casting a spell. Now, what you don't know is, is that the one you vote for is sponsored by 
uh, private corporations. So actually, it's not really the individual you voted for that you're empowering, but it's the private corporations behind them. But let's forget about that. And after, there are even criminals involved in it. But you don't see the criminals nor the private corporations. You see the candidates. So there's already a trick over there. And then, once the election results come, you hear your candidate won. You're rejoicing, you're dancing around, saying, oh, praise the Lord, he won. Okay, your candidate won. And now you expect your candidates to act out what he told you he would do. Samuel Guerra, thanks for the, for the Super Chat donation, very much appreciate it. You now expect your candidate to act out what he promised you. And you think that you are the reason he's there. You still think that you casting that vote is the reason he's there. No, the real reason he's there is because he has corporations and criminals backing him up. The casting of the vote was just a ritual to validate him being placed there. Now, and both candidates, or all the other candidates, were backed up by the same criminals and the same corporations. So it wouldn't matter who would have won the election anyway, because they're all put there by the same people. But you don't know that. You seriously believe in that this candidate is the answer. Now, when the individual is in office, whether it's as a mayor or as a governor or as the president or in some countries, prime minister, or as just a, min a minister in a field, at some point you think, okay, but where are the outcomes that this individual would bring? And then the individual says, okay, listen, I'm the president, but this is not how this country works. You have the president of the exclusive power, but you also have the Congress. There's also a vote for Congress coming up. Please, cast your vote to help me to, help to win Congress. So you think, okay, let's do that also. Because you already made an investment in siding with this candidate. And on an emotional level, you bonded with people who did the same thing. So you also broke friendships with people who disagreed with you. So there's a personal emotional cost. There's a personal emotional price you've paid by voting for this individual. So you want it to be worth it. So when you hear, oh, I need to help this individual further, well, already, already got an individual in office, so why not help him into Congress? You do that. And then, in Congress, they, they get the majority. And still, the outcomes don't come. Then you're told, you need to go to your local councillor, because yes, we can enact the laws over here, but it's the local councillors that need to act it out. So you go to local councillors, and your councillors tell you, well, it has to do with the, we have to go to the courthouse. So you're, you're tossed here and there, and you never get the outcomes you voted for. There's always some excuse why it didn't work out. And then four years passed, and now you have another election. And then the exact same thing happens. Now, you may vote for a different political party or whatever, but now it's the same thing that happens again. It's a cycle that repeats itself, a cycle of disappointment. And what you don't realize is, is that by you being tossed back and forth, finding out what's going on, you miss out that you've been tricked all along. The outcomes that were promised to you were were never supposed to take place. Those were false promises to get you to be invested in the system. And by you being invested in the system, the system gave legitimacy. Now, compare this to those pagan churches. You attend those church and tell you to pay tithes and offerings. They tell you, if you go to, to come to church every Sunday, uh, you read your Bible and you pay your tithes and offerings, blessings will come into your life. And you attend church for 10 years. 10 years you've been paying tithes and offerings, and still you haven't gotten further in life. You still have a 9 to 5 job that exhausts you because you work 40 hours a week. You still have debt collectors haunting you. You still have health issues. 
and none of your dreams and visions came true. So you begin to complain, and the pastor tells you the reason why the tithing and offering didn't work because you don't have enough faith, or you didn't tithe and offer enough. Then you attend church for another five years, and within 15 years, you, nothing happens. And then one of your sons has to go to college. But A, he needs to take a student loan because there is no money for, to pay for his college, tuition fee. And look at this, all the money you've been dropping at that church for the past 15 years, all that money together forms a tuition fee that your son now has to pay for college. So think about it. You are there cost, uh, costing money into some bucket for some, for some pastor. The money you put in there, the pastor puts it on a trust fund at the bank. And this trust fund relating to this foundation called the church enables them to take million, million dollar loans. So the pastor takes million dollar loans that later the creditors uh, can charge the church for, of which you are a member, and the pastor gets away with million dollar loans living a luxurious lifestyle. That's what happens. And now, you, for the past 15 years, you've been costing money in the bucket, and that's the money you had. And that's the money that you could have invested in your son. But now, the money went to the pastor, who's living a luxurious lifestyle, and your son now has no financial uh, benefit for to start college with. Wouldn't it have been better to keep all that money and to put aside little by little till your son had to go to college? Yes, it would have been better. But because you were invested in expecting future blessings, you gave away the blessing you had today for a future outcome but the future outcome never came. There's a difference between investing, there's a difference between uh, risking and gambling. When you take a risk, you know full well that you may not get the revenue you expect. That's an investment. That's when you are taking a risk. When you gamble, you just discard any security. Let me, let me explain. When you, in, when you take a risk, you know full well that the revenue may not come. So when you take a risk, you don't, let's say, put all your money into something. You put a small amount to check how it goes. If it goes well, you have a revenue. If it doesn't go well, you still have something else. And you may invest in multiple things at the same time, because if one thing doesn't work out, something else will. So risking is when you venture out in a strategic and wise way. That's a risk. Gambling is when you think, ah, oh, you know what? Whether I win or lose, it doesn't care. You disregard your own long-term prosperity. That is gambling. And gambling is often disguised as an election or paying tithes and offering. It's disguised as many things. Or the stock market, which is also gambling. The thing with gambling is, once you lose, you've lost completely. With a risk, even if you don't get the revenue you want, you still, still, have, you still learn something and there's still some benefit for you. For example, if you invest $10 in stocks somewhere for a company and the stocks don't work out, well, it's just $10. But if you put $20,000, your old savings, into one stock, and the stock market doesn't work, now that's gambling. Now certain places you shouldn't go like the casino. The casino is rigged. Very unlikely anyone would win over there. We know that the casino is rigged, and that when you go to the casino, you, you're sure to lose everything because it's gambling. That's why a casino is a cam gambling business. Casino. Casi means almost, no means no. Casi, no. Almost, no. So, you're almost there, but you never get there. Casino. So, you know that in a casino, you're going to lose. You know that. So that's why people don't go to casinos. But the elections are just like a casino. Man, those churches are just like casinos. You are told that there's a big chance of winning, but it's rigged that you will never win. 
And let's go back to my question. What was the, what's the difference between a crystal ball and the bailout box? Now, when you go to a fortune teller, you get specific information about events. But the demons inform you in such a way that you end up stuck. So going to a fortune teller will give you some insight, absolutely. However, the outcomes will not benefit you in the long run. So just like going to a fortune teller will trap you into a cycle of misfortune in the long run, the same way, go, uh, same way a bailout box binds you to a cycle of disappointment over and over again. And you know what the strange thing is? People keep falling for it. Now, a casino is into your face that it's rigged with the machines, with the poker that they're playing. So, a casino, you know that you're going to lose all your money. That's why people that go to casinos, you often know that they have a gambling addiction. But when people vote every four years or every two years in elections and they never get the outcomes were problems with them, we don't call them gambling addicts. It's the same thing. They invest in the same system over and over again, or they, and they, the outcomes always disappoint them. But they keep doing it because they are invested. Or someone goes to church every Sunday, paying offerings, and every end of the month they pay their tithes, and never, ever does the financial breakthrough come. Never, ever does the financial blessings arrive. Never, ever do they make any step forward in life. So, there's no difference between a crystal ball and a bailout box. There is none. Both are rigged. The crystal ball is rigged into trapping you in cycles of misfortune in the long run. And the bailout box also traps you in cycles of misfortune, but this is a misfortune you don't see coming. So in both cases, you're worse off than when you first began. For example, in the United States, you have, you have European Americans, or white Americans, but they're European Americans, so I prefer to say European Americans, the European Americans who've been in poverty for generations. And they keep voting for the same political party that never helps them out of poverty. The policies of that political party keeps them in poverty. Yet they keep voting for it. Why are they doing that? It is because those people are stuck mentally. They're so invested in the so-called values of that political party, they don't realize that those values are keeping them down. Just like the lotto. And already made videos explaining the lottery that the lottery is a trap. Sometimes with the lottery, you do win some prizes. But, but, but think about this. I want you all to think with me. Money is printed at factories owned by the government. Okay? So money is printed. It's handed over to corporations where you go to work and you get paid. Or you need to go to a bank to take a loan to get the money. In any case, they print the money and they make it hard for you to get the money. So if it's so hard to get money because you have to work for it or you need to get a business loan and every way you get money in this world, you're stuck at some conditions. They don't give money freely to you. So if society doesn't provide money freely, freely to you, why does society have this thing called the lottery where you can get win money just like that. If society has a pattern and a norm not to offer money freely, why then do you have an outlet called the lottery where you get big where you have the chance to get big amounts of money for free? Why would they do that? Think about it. Most of the population is stuck having to go to work every day or they're stuck at satanic rituals just to have a cash flow. And then you purchase a lottery ticket and you win two, three, four million dollars, 
What do you think is going to happen when you win all that money and the rest of the population is still stuck in, get, in, in cycles to get money? So the rest of the population is still getting money. They, they have financial sorrows and stress and you, you got money freely. What do you think is going to happen to you? Let me know in the live chat. Let's say you would win that one, two, three, or four million dollars, and the rest of the population is still stuck in having difficulty getting money. What do you think is going to happen to you? What will be the impact on you once this comes out that you're the one that won? Let me know in the live chat. Mm -hmm. I got one answer already. What about that resting? Oh, yes. Amen. I got this. Just, just like Suzanne said, they will kill you. Christmas said the Rosalind will follow. Uh, the haves not will become disgruntled with the lot of winners, just like Armand Saint said. Envy. So look at this. The, uh, the rest of the public, they've been tricked in this thing called society, and society makes it hard to get money. That is to keep people trapped in investing. So the rest has been scammed. And they don't see a way out. And now society allows you to have a lot of money. Psychology goes like this. People are going to think, why did he win? I've been going to work every day, every morning. I've been loyal. I've been following the, the laws of the land. I never, I don't have a criminal record. And yet I have difficulty with paying bills. And this individual just purchased a small ticket of one dollar and now he has three or four million. You become the target of the psychic anger of the crowd. So all the psychic anger which would otherwise uh, go towards the politicians and the deceivers are now going towards the one who won the lottery. So you become the scapegoat for all the uh, misfortune in the community. And before you know it, you're the one being killed or you're the one uh, suffering accidents due to psychic violence. Because the public should be upset with the government that lied to them. But because... You, the, the public now sees you with money, they're distracted to be come upset with you. So you win so even if you would win a lottery, which very unlikely, even if you did, it's a trap. So the so even things like winning the lottery is not a blessing. Oh, and look at this. If you win the lottery, it's then you'll see who people really are. Look, the majority of the, let me say, the population has no leverage. They don't. And now you have this enormous leverage with a lot of money. Of course, you're going to be upset that you have the leverage and want to do whatever you can to take it away from you. If necessary, they will even kill you for it. Some will do voodoo rituals to get you to, for you to get access to all of that. I'm telling you. So, again, in society, you have the rule makers and the rule followers. The rule makers don't want the public to turn on them. So, they give some big benefit to one to rule followers that all the other rule followers are haunting that one rule follower who got the advantage. That's how it goes. So again, society is an old, dirty, rigged game. You don't ever win in it. That's why they want you to think that society is reality. Because if they would tell you as a child that society is a game, a game you can never win, you would think, why would I play a game I can never win? But they want you to think you can win. That's why you have those celebrities. That's why you have those uh, self-help gurus those self-made millionaires, so-called. That's why you have all those success stories that they present to you. Those success stories are to convince you and to trick you into believing that society is something real that's worth, worth the effort. Because you may not want to become a millionaire, you may not want to become a, a, a celebrity, but you just want to have a long-term 
is without being bothered. And you want the acceptance by the crowd so the crowd will have your back. You want the, you, you want the acceptance and, and the security as well as the success. That's all those are things you want. You want to have an outcome in which you are at ease and you're protected by the community. That's what you want. But you realize soon that that outcome will never come. You just keep paying, 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 in the form of paying taxes, in the form of paying by going to work every day. You keep on paying, 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 but you never get the ease. And every time there's someone else, someone to blame for why it didn't work. Either a corrupt politician or those damn criminals, or those migrants coming, there's always someone else they put as the perpetrator of why you didn't get the outcome. Now, the way out of uh, this, this scam and this con called society is when believers become autonomous in the sense that we generate, we, we, we grow our own food, we, we generate our own currencies and we generate our own communities. That's how you can escape all of this. As simple as that. And on an individual level, you have to rely on the provision of the Heavenly Father in how to use your prayers and Christian decorations to manipulate the, the circumstances in daily life in your favor. Those are the two ways you can escape being trapped by society. Now, society will be around you anyway because most of the people on the earth fall for it. But as a group, we can escape being trapped by it if we together walk in a blessing. And as an individual believer, you can use your prayers, increase decoration, and fasting to have an impact, a real-life impact in your, in your environment that will keep the violence of society at bay. Indeed, Les Brown, the Christian entrepreneurs advertise on YouTube. Don't fall for it indeed. I already explained how we can escape the matrix. It's not really, it's not really escaping. It's not really escaping the matrix, it's actually seeing through it. Once you see through it, it's not a triumph anymore. Once you see through it, you also realize hmm, there are other options how we can do things. So you can be prosperous in the here and now. You can be have real life long term benefits. But those real life long term benefits will be the result of you walking by faith. It will not be the result of hard work and achievement. So do not fall for this rigged game called society because it's a rigged game to keep you away from worshiping the heavenly father that's what it is it's a dirty game because you were never told it's a game and you were never offered another option by the community that's what they did forgive them process it and now walk in real power that's what we do You increase your faith by walking in it. That's how you do it. Yeah. At some point, you need to let go of this urge to control and just get along with the flow of the Holy Spirit. Just by walking by faith, by walking the resurrection part of Christ, that you're able to overrule all of this. Anyone who tells you that you can escape the matrix by uh, using... Uh, the quote-unquote law of attraction or by using uh, spells and all of that, they're lying to you. Using the paranormal will give you relief within the matrix, but it won't get you out of it. 
Everyone who tells you that you can bend the rules of society in your favor and win, they're lying to you. Society is a mind trick. It's a mind trick to rob you. You hand over real wealth, which is your health and the years of your life, and you get only a pat on the back at the end of each month in return. But to prevent the masses from figuring out that they're being scammed, from time to time you have tax returns. From time to time you have a stimulus check. From time to time you have those pleasant rewards they hand out. I don't think, oh, there's something good in this thing called society. No, there's nothing good in it. It's designed to rob you and to drain you. You only get crumbs in return to let you think that a big reward is coming, but a big reward never comes. And listen to what I'm saying here. A lot of the people out there who, just like uh, Lam said this, a lot of your peers out there, people of your age group, I don't care whether you, whether you are in your 20s, 30s, 40s, or whatever, a lot of the people out there beyond age 25 who are still investing in this uh, 9 to 5 or in this uh, society, uh, hard work ethic and all that, all those other people who are so into society, most of them are stuck. They're mentally stuck. They just can't see that they're in a cycle of being drained. There is no difference in walking in faith and walking in power. When you walk, in, when you walk by faith, you end up walking in the resurrection power of Christ. They go hand in hand. Because you can't walk in the resurrection power if you don't have faith. The faith is the key that unlocks the power for you to walk in, in daily life. And to unlock the power, you have to be renewed in your mind, agreeing with Christ. Just remember, most of the people out there, they're stuck. They're mentally frozen. If you will talk to them and show them proof that something is wrong with society, they will agree with you. But then suddenly they become quiet. It is as if, it is as if they are malfunctioning and suddenly they talk about something else. Imagine a robot suddenly standing still. Because the robot malfunctions. That's how a lot of people become when you point out proof to them that something is off. And after they remain quiet for several seconds or several minutes, they either ignore what you just said, or they laugh it off, or they may turn on you. And here's the thing, cognitive dissonance is something that only lasts for a short, well, for a short moment. Now let me explain. An individual will be shocked when they figure out they've been conned and they've been scammed. When you're scammed, conned, or hoaxed, you'll be shocked. You have difficulty admitting what happens. You will be in denial. But this Denial will be short-lived. This denial is a defense mechanism for being overwhelmed, which is healthy. I mean, tragic news is quite overwhelming. But at some point, you realize, okay, I've been scammed, I've been caught, I've been hoaxed, what now? So cognitive dissonance doesn't take years. At some point, someone knows full, fully well what's going on, they just want to admit it. So they end up collaborating with what's going on so they don't have to face the situation. And that's the case for most of the people out there. Most of the people out there, they know full well what goes on. They know full well, uh, they may not know all the details, but they know full well what's going on. 
they just don't want you to see that they are a, col a collabor collaborator to what's going on. They want you to think they're innocent people who were fooled. Now there are innocent people being fooled. There are millions of them. We were all innocent people that were fooled. But at some point, you're not an innocent victim anymore. At some point, you become a collaborator but because by not dealing with the fact you've been tricked. And a lot of people out there, they know full well that they've been tricked. They know full well that they're being hoaxed. But what happens when they have children, they groom their children in the same hoaxes they grew up with. Or they take out their anger on their children, which is which also trapping their children in children into trauma. And here's one thing I want you to understand. People that have cognitive dissonance. They respond differently from people who are willing collaborate collaborators. Let me explain. Let's say now that um, someone tell, let's say someone tells you your wife is cheating. Okay, let's say someone tells you John. I'm using example now. Let's say someone tells you John. Um, where's your wife? And John says, Oh, my wife just. It's at work now. I don't tell him, John, it's 8 p.m. And she, oh, the office closes at 5 p.m. How come the office closes at 5 p.m. and it's now 8 p.m. and your wife is still at work, John? Eventually, John says, well, she has to overwork. Then you tell him, okay, John, if your wife is overworking so much, has your her income increased? And then John remains quiet. And then you tell John, if your wife is overworking so often, how come you still have financial struggles in the household? You just told me that you, you guys are difficulty paying bills, but your wife is overworking. Why isn't she paid the hours she's overworking? And why is she doing this for months, overworking like that? Then John remains quiet. John cuts off the conversation, but when you're gone, John is going to think about it. John will think, okay, this doesn't add up at all. And then John uh, thinks, you know what? I think something else is going on that my wife is hiding from me. And John himself realized my wife is likely cheating on me. So instead of telling him openly, uh, John, your wife is cheating, you can just hint to him what doesn't add up. And John has cognitive dissonance because it's a shocking and tragic news, but eventually he considers what you're saying. Even though he doesn't agree with you, even though he's upset, he will consider it. But someone that's a willing collaborator will full out attack you from the start, or they will ridicule you, or they will uh, try to trick you into a fight, whatever. They just don't want to hear it at all. That's the difference with someone that has cognitive dissonance. They're shocked that they've been tricked, and someone who's a willing collaborator. So, understand, many people out there are not innocent victims that have been tricked. We all have been tricked. But at some point, you're not a victim anymore. Once you're an adult, once you're grown and you have the option to unlearn things and to become better, it's on you to let go of what you were tricked into and to become better. A lot of us out there don't want to face this. They just want to continue unbothered in the scam they've been scammed into. They don't want to deal with the side effects and the bad outcomes, but they don't want to face the fact they've been scammed because that means facing everything and relearning everything. So, know what you're dealing with. Are you dealing with someone that has been tricked or are you dealing with a collaborator? Now, the individual that's tricked as well as the collaborator, they look similar. They may act similar, but they're not the same. When you're dealing with someone who has been tricked, you need to use wisdom. 
and how you inform them. But you can still inform them. Someone that's a collaborator is dangerous because they know full well what goes on. And when, they, when the collaborator knows that you know, the so collaborator will stick to take you out. The collaborator, the collaborator will even fake being ignorant. The collaborator will even fake want to know what's going on. They will fake being a fake, they will fake an awakening, they will fake having epiphanies just to get close to you in order to hinder you and sabotage you. There are reasons, there are valid reasons, and there are excuses. If you just had a car accident and you can't walk because you're in the hospital, that's a valid reason. If you were raised in Scotland and you speak Scottish English, that's a valid reason. The fact you don't speak French fluently, it's because you can't speak French fluently because you were not raised in France. So that's a valid reason. If you've been traumatized and because of that, you have, you're dysfunctional, that's a valid reason. So there are valid reasons out there. An excuse is when there is no valid reason for, for a situation, but you just don't want to do something about it. That's an excuse. Excuses are never justified. Because if they were justified, it would be a valid reason. There is no valid reason, there's no justification possible for people not facing the fact they've been tricked for years. At some point, you are a collaborator. Simple as that. So, recognize what you're dealing with on time. Are you dealing with someone that's been tricked? Or are you dealing with, some, are you dealing with someone who is a victim of trickery or dealing with a collaborator who's part of the trick. Recognize it on time. Don't confuse the two. Well, this is it for now. Thank you all for being here. If you have any questions relating to the topic, you can ask them right now. If you have to leave, you can leave. I'm going to wait till I get some questions. If I don't get any questions, I will close down the live, live stream. Good. I didn't get any questions. When's the next live stream? I may make another live stream within a few hours later today. Uh, let's see how late it is now. It's now 9.14 a.m. over here. Okay, I may do a live stream within, let's say, five hours from now likely five or six hours from now i may do another live stream because i'm i'm fasting right now and after eating out of the fasting i'll do another life someone asks how would you collaborate with a fellow believer that's been tricked and ignorant well it's simple a fellow believer has totally spirit inside of them so at some point, the spirit inside of them will push them to see things. So the way you collaborate with a fellow believer that's been tricked and ignorant is that you just hint to them that something is off. Apart from that, you fellowship with them, but you don't fellowship too long with them because they still have to be renewed in their mind. So you give them space to renew their mind, but you only hint to them that something is wrong. And you point out to them that, hey, in Christ we have 
we have fullness and completeness. So why do we hold on to all those toxic restrictions? So point to them, point to them that in Christ we have fullness and completion. So why do we hold on to restrictions? Because we as believers, we operate from internal conviction. We don't operate by, by external reference points. So, mention the internal conviction of the Holy Spirit. That's what, that's what we need to focus on. Yes, we operate by internal conviction. Absolutely. Okay, someone said, I don't have any questions. Crystal clear. Okay. Well, within six hours after this, I'll make another live stream. Six hours after this. Thank you all for being here. Keep it on Christ. I'll see you next time.